Hi, I'm Peter Hart. Welcome back to FAIR TV. The big Obamacare news this week was the White House announcement that over 7 million people have signed up for the Affordable Care Act. This left conservative pundits trying to claim that that number wasn't what it was cracked up to be. Here's Bill Kristol on ABC's This Week on April 6th. The Rand Corporation says about 800,000 of those people were previously uninsured. 800,000 out of 7 million. The huge bulk of them previously insured. So, big deal. He moved people from insurance plans they liked to forces them into the exchanges. It's like saying, you've got to give the Soviet Union a lot of credit. 200 million people bought bread in their grocery stores. Now, this line that not very many people who didn't have insurance before have insurance now sounds kind of convincing, but it's incorrect. Crystal is picking up a line that was very popular in the right-wing media. It seemed to have started in a British tabloid, which claimed that the Rand Corporation did a study that found a mere 800,000 people were previously uninsured and now had enrolled and paid their first premium. Now, that's not the same as what Crystal claimed, that the law only covered 800,000 people who weren't covered before. But that Rand study was shared with the LA Times, and their report on it looks a bit different. The LA Times is not talking about 800,000, it's talking about millions, as in four and a half million people covered under Medicaid who didn't have health insurance before, and about a million and a half previously uninsured who have bought plans on the Obamacare exchanges. And these numbers don't include those who signed up close to the deadline. Any way you slice it, Bill Kristol is wrong. Lucky for him, he's a right-wing TV pundit and there aren't any consequences for spreading misinformation. Now, it might sound strange to say that sometimes the Israel-Palestine conflict is easy to understand, but the current impasse over the peace talks is pretty straightforward. Media coverage? Not so much. Part of the deal to keep the negotiations going involves Israel releasing Palestinian prisoners. The fourth scheduled release did not happen on time. Then, as Secretary of State John Kerry noted, Israel signaled an expansion of illegal settlement building. At that point, the Palestinian Authority said it would sign on to 15 different international treaties. That move led to headlines, like this one in the New York Times, about the Palestinians causing the talks to collapse. Many readers of the Times wrote the paper to complain that this coverage muddied up reality. The paper's public editor agreed that they had a point. But these problems persist. Take a look at the Washington Post. This story emphasized the Israeli narrative, even as it presented, eventually, an accurate timeline. If readers parse some of these stories carefully enough, they might be able to get a sense of what happened in reality. Good journalism isn't supposed to make it hard for readers to understand the facts. And finally, it's probably no surprise that Bill O'Reilly would kick off his show with a rant about how the secular progressives are ruining the country. And it's also no surprise that he would come up short on the facts. O'Reilly explained on April 4th that the United States doesn't force a religion on its citizens, but it's clear that we have specifically religious roots. It was quite clear that the founders based the justice system in the New World on Judeo-Christian tenets. That's why a sculpture of Moses holding the Ten Commandments adorns the Supreme Court building in Washington. But today, you could never put old Moses and the commandments up on a government wall anywhere. The secular progressives would scream, you are imposing religion if you do that, because Islam and other theologies do not believe in the Ten Commandments. Now, it is true that Moses appears in a sculpture at the Supreme Court, a piece, it should be noted, that was designed in the 1930s. O'Reilly even showed viewers a photo of it. But also on that sculpture, his viewers may have wanted to know, are the Chinese philosopher Confucius and the Greek lawmaker Solon. The point of the sculpture isn't to assign Moses credit for the U.S. legal system. Now, inside the court, though, there's another image of Moses, so maybe that's what O'Reilly was talking about. Wait, no, sorry to report this to Bill O'Reilly. Moses is there, but so is the prophet Muhammad, and Francis, King Louis IX, and Napoleon. So maybe the Supreme Court is also part of this secular war on America. I'm Peter Hart. Thanks for tuning in to FAIR TV.